In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the resolution of a vector into rectangular components. And the note at the top here says this vector, and we're talking about the green vector here, can be resolved, which means broken down into uh, horizontal and vertical components that are each vectors, that is, vectors add to the given vector. And so uh, in order to calculate the, comp the uh, components, we're going to draw them first. So this is the horizontal component. Think of it as if there was a light shining down in here. The horizontal component is the shadow of the um, vector that we're talking about. So this is the horizontal component and the vertical component goes from the head of that vector up to the tip of the original vector. Notice that these two vectors are placed uh, head to tail. This is the head of the uh, horizontal component. This is the uh, tail of the vertical component. So these two vectors add together to give you that vector, add as vectors. Remember, place them head to tail in order to add vectors. Now, uh, this is an important angle. It's the angle the, the vector makes with the uh, horizontal, the x-axis. In order to calculate the um, uh, horizontal component and the vertical component, we're going to use some trigonometry. Now, this is, and we can write angle trigonometry because this is a right angle here. Now this says that the horizontal component's magnitude is the magnitude of the vector we're given times the cosine of the angle. And the reason for that, and I'm going to show you this. So for this angle, this is the uh, adjacent side here. The R is the hypotenuse. And so uh, I'm, I'm talking about the uh, horizontal component and uh, of course we have the uh, original R vector. That's why it's, we're working with the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Now the trig ratio that involves adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So the cosine of angle theta is the adjacent side, which is the length of the R vector, R sub H vector, sorry. That's an H right there over the length of the hypotenuse, which would be the length of the R vector. Now, we're trying to get an expression for the magnitude of the horizontal vector. So if we rearrange this, um, the cosine has a denominator of 1. So if we rearrange for the magnitude of RH, then the magnitude of the R vector, its horizontal component, multiplied by 1, which is just the magnitude of the horizontal component, is equal to the product of the r vector's magnitude and the cosine of theta. So the magnitude of the horizontal component is the length of the original vector multiplied by the cosine of the angle, which is exactly what we have here. Now, the, in order to find the, uh, the size of the vertical component, this is the opposite side, opposite the angle theta, and this is the hypotenuse. So the trig ratio that involves opposite and hypotenuse is sine, so I would write the sine of angle theta is how big the vertical component is divided by the length of the hypotenuse, which would be the length of the r vector. And so we rearrange for uh, the magnitude of the vertical component. It's the product of r and the sine of theta. Kind of running out of room here. So the, uh, let's get rid of that writing now. So the uh, magnitude of the vertical component is the length of the original vector times the sine of the angle. So that's how from the original, how, if you know how long the original vector is and the angle it makes with the horizontal, that's all you need to know in order to calculate the uh, horizontal component and the vertical component. Now a specific example here, number one, you're asked to determine the horizontal and vertical comp components for a 200 Newton force. So let's say this is 200 Newtons here uh, acting on a wagon. So like this is the, um, um, the handle in the wagon that you're pulling. And this angle was, is an angle of 22 degrees. 22 degrees with the horizontal. So the length of the uh, force horizontal would be 200 times the, and the horizontal one is cosine, times the cos of 22 
which is 185 newtons. For the vertical component, which is the force that's being pulled upwards, it would be 200 times the sine of 22 degrees, which would be about 75 newtons. So for example, in the uh, question here, if this was 22 degrees, and the size of this vector was 200 newtons, then the size of this side would be 185 newtons. And the size of this side right here would be 75 newtons. And so think of those as the 185 as an x coordinate and the 75 as a y coordinate or component actually. And so we actually could call this the point. That's actually the point 185 comma 75 that's the point so we could actually refer to the vector r in terms of components components is uh, the x this is the x component how big it is and this is the uh, uh, y component how big it is so although that's the point 185 75 we could actually write vector well f in this case i guess it is vector f as the vector 185 comma 75 and all the 185 means is that there's a 185 newton distance here amount here and a 75 newton amount up in this direction so those are the components of the vector written in like uh, like an ordered pair but uh, for a vector the square brackets are used to represent a vector and the components simply mean that's how far you go horizontally and vertically from the tail of the vector to the head of the vector. Now this um, in this example if you've seen one of the previous lessons uh, I solved uh, the same example here using just uh, cosine law and sine law to find um, what the uh, resulting vector is. In this question, if you haven't seen that, we're going to do it just using components here. An airplane is flying at a heading of 310 degrees at a constant speed of 425 kilometers per hour. So a bearing of 310 is, think of, okay, straight north is 0, so then around here is 90, around here is another 90, so that's 180, another 90 makes 270, and so another 40, 270 plus 40 gives you the bearing of 310. So that's that P vector, P representing the plane, is the 425 kilometers per hour at that direction. Uh, the wind is blowing on a bearing of 70 degrees at 55 kilometers per hour. So this is 70 degrees here. So this would be 20 degrees here because uh, between that angle and that angle right there, they have to add to 90. What we need actually is the uh, angle it makes with the horizontal in order to calculate components. So we're asked to determine the actual speed and direction of the plane relative to the ground. So we're going to find the uh, components of each of these two vectors, and that will actually be the component of our uh, velocity vector. There's the vector we're trying to find, which is actually the sum of these two vectors. Uh, this is the wind vector here. Um, and I guess that's this, again that's the same as the wind vector here. Now in order to specify uh, a direction if this is 40 degrees here then this would be 140 degrees because what we need here in order to calculate the components of P is the angle it makes with the positive x-axis. So the 40 here and the 140 here add to 180 because together they make a straight line. And so that's why that's at an angle of 140 degrees with the positive x-axis. We already have labeled that the wind vector is at an angle of 20 degrees with the positive x-axis. So in order to calculate the components of the plane vector, it would be its size, the 425 kilometers per hour, times the cosine, of 140 degrees, the angle it makes with the positive x-axis, that's the x component, comma, the y component would be uh, 425 times the sine of 140 degrees. Now if you evaluate that, this is negative 325.6 and this is 273.2, and so that vector right there, this amount would be negative 325.6, and this distance up here would be 273.2 up. So that's the components of that vector. 
for the for the wind vector it would be 55 times the cos of 20 comma 55 sine 20 size of the vector times the cos of the angle comma size of the vector times the sine of the angle for the y component if we evaluate those we get uh, this is 51.7 and this is 18.8 .8. so for this vector here this side at the bottom is 51.7 and that vertical amount is 18.8 .8. now in order to get the velocity vector of the plane it's just the sum of the planes direction vector is trying to go plus the wind uh, vector as well so we're just going to add these two components uh, vectors together now we add them by adding the components so we add the x component of the p vector and the x component of the w vector and then we add the y component of the p vector and the y component of the w vector and so this is what we're adding so when we add negative 325.6 and 51.7 we get negative 273.9 when we add 273.2 and 18.8 .8, we get 292 so that's the components of this red vector the negative 273.9 is a vector that goes from here horizontally I'm only going as far as uh, like straight down from that head of the vector and 292 is the distance up it's not really drawn to scale but it certainly is in the third sorry second quadrant now if we want to find out actually how long that is, we can just use Pythagoras' theorem because the length of a vector in uh, component form is uh, just the root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. Because this is, you can really think of this as a right triangle right here. Uh, dropping this down, this is the negative 273.9 side and the vertical side is the 292. So evaluating the root of the x component squared plus the y component squared we get the uh, length of that vector is 400 kilometers per hour if you saw the previous example in the uh, applications note uh, we got exactly the same thing 400 kilometers per hour now to specify a direction we use the tan the tan of the angle is the uh, uh, y component divided by the x component because the y component if you draw this triangle I, I've referred to this triangle a couple times. I'll draw it now. If you look at this triangle, and this is a right angle here, this side is the negative 273.9, and this side here is the 292. In order to find the size of this angle, that's my angle theta, this is the adjacent side down here, and this is the opposite side here. So that's why I'm using tan, because I have the opposite and adjacent sides. I could use other trig too, because I do know the length of the hypotenuse is the 400, but I'm, I'm, I'm using tan. So the, uh, that divides out to negative 1.0661. And uh, if you take the inverse tan of that, you get negative 47 degrees. Uh, the tan function in a calculator will only return, uh, or sorry, the inverse tan or arctan, angles in the first or fourth quadrant. So this angle of negative 47 degrees, we have to use it to find the angle we're looking for, but it's not the actual direction. Neg a negative rotation course is down in this quadrant. Uh, so if we actually drew that, negative 47 degrees looks like this. And I'm not really drawing this to scale, I know, but I'm trying to draw it relative to the diagram. That's negative 47 degrees. Remember, a negative rotation is a clockwise rotation. So the actual angle we're looking for is exactly opposite it. So if this is 47 degrees in size, this angle right here would be 47 because they're opposite one another. This is supposed to be a straight line with the red and the dotted. And of course, this is a straight line here. So this would be 47 degrees right here, not this one. So if that's 47 degrees here, in order to state the direction, um, 90 plus another 90 is 180, plus another 90 is 270, plus 47 makes a bearing of 317 degrees. So that bearing is actually 317 degrees. Uh, you could actually say, uh, you could actually add 180, get 133. So you could actually say that the direction around there is 133 and deduce that angle as well. So the plane's velocity is 400 kilometers per hour at a bearing of 317 degrees. And that is the end of the lesson.